So into this video, I'm gonna be making a video that I did not want to make, and a lot of you guys asked me the same questions in prior video. How does the Fuji X100 6 compares versus the Leica Q3? And in my opinion, it is kind of like a pointless comparison because both cameras sit at a different price point, different sensor, uh, different brand, and there are a lot of things that are different in these cameras, but the more I actually start going over the specs, the more I find this camera similar. So. I decided to make this video up on your request. We're gonna go top down and discover what's different, what's the same, which one is the camera for you. Let's go. All right, so I have the cameras right over here. So on this side, we have the Fuji X100 Mark 6, a camera that was released this year. And on the other side, we have the Leica Q3, which is a camera that was released last year. Now, the Fuji X100 Mark 6 is gonna run you at around $1,600, very hard to get one right now, and the Leica Q3 is gonna run you at around $6,000, and after you know being released almost a year, still very hard to get this camera. Now, the other big difference is going to be that one is actually a full-frame sensor, the Leica Q3 has the new 60 megapixel sensor, whereas this one has the new sensor, but APS-C CMOS, same sensor uh, that we can find, find in the uh, X-T5, which is a 40 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. Now, both cameras have gray colors. The main difference is going to be, or main advantage is going to be uh, right here with the Q3 having the cleanest image quality out of the two cameras, and for obvious reasons. And we gotta talk about the lenses. Now this one is a 20A in the Leica Q3, and the uh, Fuji X100 Mark 6, we're talking about a 35 equivalent, because um, the focal length is a 23 APS-C, so when you do the 1.5, it gives you um, a 35 millimeter, millimeter equivalent into full frame. So this one is gonna have an aperture of f1.7. This is going to be very important, and i go back to that in just a moment, where this one is gonna have an aperture of f2. Now, when you account for the crop factor, that f2 is more like the aperture that you can get from an f3, and that's gonna be open wide, so uh, the depth of field is going to be different from both cameras. Now, at f1.7, and 20 millimeters, even if you crop to an equivalent of um, 35 millimeters, you are gonna get an even shallower depth of field than the Fuji X100 Mark 6 at its native um, you know, F2, which is, again, you know, more like an F3, and 35 millimeter equivalent. So uh, for that reason alone, if money wouldn't be an issue and I have to pick one camera for photography, definitely this one is gonna be the much more superior uh, camera in terms of sensor and also in terms of optic. Now let's talk a little bit about the lens because this is an amazing lens and it is probably one of the best 28 millimeter lenses that I've tried. This lens is going to be uber sharp at f1.7. Super, super sharp, all the way across the range of the aperture. Whereas the Fuji is going to be soft at f2. And there are some people saying that the lens is sharp, but I mean, I've seen the same uh, issue with my prior version, the Mark 5. And again, it's not an issue, but it is just the limitation of the lens. If you see this lens without this hood that I installed, it's actually really small and really compact. I mean, the amount of glass that we have here is completely different than the amount of glass we have here, the quality of the glass most likely, and the overall design. But when it comes to image quality, the um, Leica Q3 is going to obliterate the Fuji. Now, that doesn't mean that more expensive means better. And there are going to be areas where the Fuji X100 Mark 6 is going to be better than the Leica Q3. But uh, we'll get to that when we start talking more about video uh, specs of both cameras. Now, let's talk about the uh, interface. And as you can see, yeah, the size of both cameras is going to be similar. I give you that. They are similar. The weight of the cameras is eh, a little bit similar. The Q3 is slightly heavier. Uh, you, you know, we have a configuration of dials that's also pretty simple. But I do shoot these cameras in aperture priority, which I think is the most fun way to shoot with these cameras. So let's flip the cameras over and we're gonna continue to see similarities right here. And I think that the main similarity is that both are range finder style. And as you can see in the um, Fuji X100B, you know, this is see-through because this one has a hybrid optical electronic viewfinder. So 
is trying to emulate a, you know, a range finder such as a Leica M11, which is just a piece of glass, you know, a window with some frame lines so you can frame your shots. But uh, it is not going to be a range finder like the Leica M11 because there's no coupling with uh, the focusing mechanism of the lens. You know, this camera is just a out of focus camera, the Fuji X100. So, you know, it's there. All right, so let's talk about some of the video specs of these cameras, all right? So we talk about megapixel, we talk about image quality. Now, when it comes to the video specs of both cameras, I have to say that um, they both have their pros and cons. You're gonna be able to capture up to 8K in 10-bit 420, I believe it is, the 8K. And this one, you're gonna be able to capture up to 6.2K in 10-bit 422 or 420 if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, 4K, 10-bit on both, the Q3 can do 8K. So, now I gotta mention something. The Q3 is gonna have some massive rolling shutter issues, uh, like massive, uh, so I wouldn't recommend this camera for running and gunning, but it is a great camera that if you wanna do some casual video or pan slowly, the camera's gonna perform excellent. The image quality is excellent. We have gamma profile on both cameras. We have gamma assist on both cameras, so you're gonna be able to kinda like pre-grade on, on, on screen your, your footage. Uh, so yeah, video specs are amazing on both cameras. But where the Fuji X100 Mark VI is going to be, in my opinion, a much more reliable camera is because um, you can actually record audio internally. And this is gonna be important if you, you, know, if you don't wanna record externally, because other than that, then this is gonna be a better option. Um, you do have a dedicated microphone port right there, as you can see. Although this port is going to be a 2.5 millimeter, so you're gonna have to convert it from 3.5, which is kinda like the standard for microphones, so you can adapt it here. But again, the capability is here, and as you can see, it has USB-C. Both cameras have USB-C, this one also. So they accept power, and also have an HDMI adapter right there. So both cameras are gonna have that capability. It's the micro HDMI, but you, know, you can also have output outside and record in a Atomos, for example, or you know any external recorder. So that's good that we have that capability on both cameras. Now, both cameras are gonna have a flip screen and tilt screen, I'm sorry. So we're gonna have a tilt screen, but the Fuji is also gonna have an advantage over the Leica. And if you see both screens like so, you're gonna realize that the one on the Leica actually uh, gets in the way of the viewfinder. And that is something that sometimes could be uh, bothersome because it, it covers you know, part of the image right here, whereas the one in the Fuji X100 Mark VI actually clears out the uh, viewfinder. And it also flips at a perfect 90 degree where the Leica Q3, that's all it flips. You know, It stays a little bit at an angle. So when it comes to the buttons, you have pretty much the same buttons. You have one, two uh, here, one, two here, play menu. Uh, you have play menu, display right here. You know, this one actually acts as display in my camera. Then you have the, um, the D-pad, the four-way D-pad, but the Fuji X100 Mark VI, it's gonna be superior because it's gonna have a joystick and I much prefer a joystick than the uh, four direction of D-pad in my opinion. It's really good. Now, when it comes to uh, the shutter and the on-off switch, they are also similar. Take a look at this, you know, they are pretty much arranged in the same uh, fashion. I really like that, much more like also like a M11, you know, same way. I don't like cameras that have the on-off switch somewhere else, you know, in another direction. Now, when it comes to dial configuration and option, I think the Fuji actually has more configuration because you have the shutter speed dial, which is the outer dial, but when you lift this, now you're controlling the ISO. And I think it's something pretty unique, you know, Fuji has that in several cameras and, uh, it works really good, but I also like the simplicity of Leica. Again, it's gonna be um, your preference, and I don't think any camera's gonna be better than another. Another thing that I have to mention, this one has a true macro mode that you can actually enable by doing so, and as you can see, you know, it gives you a macro scale there, and then the distance scale, whereas this one is going to have also micro, uh, macro mode as well, and, um, uh, but you know the lens, as you can see, is different. Now, for street photography, this one is going to be a way better system. You have the distance scale there. Um, the manual focus mechanism, you know, is more of a focus mechanism of a manual lens. It doesn't spin all the way. I believe it, is, it spins maybe 70 degrees and it stops, kind of like a, you know, like an M lens. Whereas this one, you know, is 
focused by wire. Both cameras are gonna be focused by wire, but this one does it in a much more manual way and in my opinion, it's a lot easier to uh, control and faster. Um, no distance scale here, although you know there are some tricks that you can use. You have the distance scale on the screen instead. But um, yeah, for, for street photography, I, I find this camera being way, way better. Uh, number one, because of the uh, 20 millimeter, you know, wider angle lens, I think it's way better for street photography. You can always go, um, you know, much more narrow cropping in post where you cannot go wider uh, you know, with a 35. So again, that's gonna be um, choice. Now, if you ask me um, which is a, you know, a better focal length for overall things, I gotta say that 35 is, uh, to me, in my opinion, but because we have more resolution, more megapixel and the full frame sensor, if I always wanna crop, I can always crop, and also the depth uh, the depth of field in this camera because of the uh, the aperture, um, you know, is going to still give me a blurrier background. And I've shot portrait with this camera with a 28 millimeters, you know, shooting this object a little bit further away to avoid distortion, and the results are amazing, cropping and printing. Um, and, you know, you don't suffer loss of resolution at 60 megapixel, even cropping at an equivalent of 70 uh, millimeter, for example. Of course, the compression and the shallow depth of field is not gonna change because you're cropping, you know? And both cameras also have internal cropping. The Fuji has uh, what is called the digital teleconverter that allows you to go from uh, 50 to 70, you know, on top of the 35 that you get native from the lens. And this one also has one that I believe it goes 20A, 35, 50, and 75. So, um, so you have that capability there, you know, both can shoot in uh, JPEGs and RAW, and that cropping internally is only gonna apply to the JPEGs, and then um, you are gonna save the metadata of that cropping, um, you know, uh, ratio, and then when you select the cropping tool, you know, it's gonna come already assigned to the um, uh, millimeter that you chose to, to crop internally. If you don't care about full frame, this may actually be a better camera, you know, you have the internal microphone recording capabilities, and you do have the film simulations that are amazing here, which you can actually customize, whereas in the Leica Q3, you cannot customize, you gotta download them from uh, Fuji, and there are a lot less, so here, you know, there's a whole community behind film simulations, and you can uh, basically shoot in JPEGs, you know, and grade the, the, the image, you know, with a particular look. That's actually pretty cool, I don't use it, just do everything in post, but for those that love that, that's fine. Now another advantage of the Fuji uh, X100 Mark VI is gonna be the flash, another reason why I pick this camera up a lot for uh, night shooting. You know, the flash is always going to be for me a, a very useful um, resource, you know, and I wish more cameras would actually add flash. Would love for the Leica Q3 to have a flash. I mean, that would be amazing. But anyway, so at a glance, I wanted to give you this uh, comparison that makes no sense, but it makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> so uh, let me know if it makes sense to you or not. So drop a comments down below. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.